Okay. Get that door. All right. I want you to that right there. Just I want you to take this and put it to the side for a minute. Okay. Don't don't get it too far. You don't need it. If you've been here a week or less, you need to listen today. Okay. We're going to roll back around on this stuff again. You've been here a week or more. You better be listening today. What we're talking on today, if you don't get a grip on it, you won't be able to do a 75% of people who come in here do a thorough and honest fourth and fifth step stay. Over. 85% who don't do thorough and honest fourth and fifth steps go back out. How many times have you been here? Huh? Have you ever did a thorough and honest fourth and fifth step? Bingo. 85%. People who come in here and do thorough and honest fourth and fifth steps. Okay. Amen. Now, for you to do a thorough and honest four step, I'm up here. You got to put some things together. Now, if somebody asked you, somebody asked you, what makes up self? What would you say? Besides, you don't have a clue. How many of y'all in this room know more about iPods, computers, tabling, cars, than you know about your own damn self? <laughs> this program falls down to two things. It falls down to this, and it falls down to now. <clears throat> If you hear, want to get here, something's blocking you. Now, if you were already here, your ass wouldn't be here. here. So if you hear, you not here. You would be here. Now, what's blocking me from this power is. I mean, here y'all know right from wrong. You know right from wrong? How long you been knowing right from wrong? Huh? How long? Yeah, it? as far back as you can remember. <laughs> when you was in diapers, you knew right from. Now, I mean, here y'all know right from wrong. And that's not the biggie. The biggie is you're always doing what self wants to do. Look, normal people, whatever the hell that is. My father is a normal person. As far back as I can remember, he has two things. What was right and what was. And for the most part, he did what was. Now, alcoholics were special. We have three things. We have what's right, what's wrong, and the biggie, what the hell I want to do. And what I want to do like the damn near kill me. Now, if I can get what I want to do out of the way, guess what's not a biggie for me anymore? Right and wrong. Now, Every human being is made up of three basic instincts. You have a social instinct, a security instinct, and a sex instinct. Now, the easiest way to remember, she starts drawing social security. You'll have no more sex. <laughs> social. Security, sex. Now, that's a joke. 
<laughs> Easiest way to remember three basic instincts that make up self. Social, security, sex. Now, I want you to take that handout you got. I want you to turn to the last sheet, an inventory sheet. Now, if you look at the sheet, look up here, Linda. If you look at the sheet, this third column is what? The instincts. This is what you're inventorying. If you don't understand what makes up, can you do this thorough and honest? There's no way. Now, you've been to treatment. You've attempted a four-step, and these were never explained to you. There's no way you could have did it thorough and honest. There's no way. Now, what we're going to do today, we're going to break some stuff down for you. We're going to make it real simple. Now, human beings are the only ones who have the instincts plus other creatures, dogs, cats, lions, tigers, bears. They have instincts, but theirs are directed by God's will. God tells them how to fit into society and to construct shelter and eat and when to reproduce. They do not get to make. A bunch of decisions when it comes to the instincts. They are directed by. Now, how many of y'all have walked around this campus long enough to see all these geese? Geese are dumb ass animals. They eat and shit everywhere. If you're not careful walking around here, you will step in a pile of. Shit. Now, if you watch them, these are dumb animals. If you watch them, when it starts to get cold, they will get together and they will fly 6,000 miles south. Stay a couple of months, fly back. Dumbass animal. Now, if you watch them fly, they fly in a V. When the lead one gets tired, it peels to the back, another one steps right in its place. There's no walking, no squawking, no quacking. They don't land and say, hey, who's taking over? They do it just like because God directs their instincts. Now, if we took all of us, God forbid, and I told y'all, meet me at the front gate. We're going to walk to that road. <laughs> when we got to the gate, this would kick in and ruin everything. About a third of you geniuses would say, we got to go now. Another third of you geniuses would say, no, we got to go right. And the rest of you Einsteins would say, no, we got to go straight. This would kick in and ruin. Now, how come it is dumb ass geese can fly 6,000 miles, stay a couple of months and fly back, and smart, intelligent human creatures couldn't get to Baton Rouge? Now, just think if you, could be like the geese and let God direct your what you could do. What you could do. Now, the whole purpose of the steps is not to stay sober. They're to get this out of the way so you can tap into some, and this is going to keep you sober. Now, Step one, what did we tell you? Two things going on. The obsession and we told you in step two, there is a power. Through the fellowship, 
and the steps. And in step three, making a decision to get this out of the way. Now, how do I actually go about carrying out step three and getting this out of the way? Now, if somebody takes four through nine, Zach, like the book says, this is going to get put into the care of, and I'm going to tap into some. Now, the way I keep that out of the way, now, I want you to turn back to the instincts. Now, I want you to look up here. I want you to listen to this. You get nothing else out of today. I really need to rethink some shit. Now, I want you to listen to me. This is the key. This is it. This is the ticket. Now, how do I get these out of my hand? Back where they belong in God's hand. How do I do that? Now, every day I do step 10. I continue to take every day I inventory these and keep them out of my hands. Now, when these are in Kevin's hand, I am dangerous. How many of y'all have taken this gift that God has given you and run it in the ground? This is a gift from God. Human creatures are the only creatures who have the instincts plus self-will. The reason God gave us human creatures the instincts and this gift he wanted us to be the dominant species. He wanted us to be dominant over the other creatures. Now, self-will can be a gift or a curse. Depends how you use it. Now, has it been a gift or a curse? That's because you're not using it the proper way. Now, the proper use of the will is to conform. My will with God's will. That's the proper use. I want you to listen to this. God does not want Kevin's will. That's why he gave it to me. He wanted it. He would take it like what he wants me to do is conform it. My will with. Now, one way or the other, your ass is going to conform. Just a good idea to be alive when you do it. But one way or the other. Now, how many of y'all, you've taken this gift and you have become very, very dishonest with it. Very selfish, very inconsiderate. So God starts to drop consequences on people like that to try and wake your ass up and bring you back home where you belong. Now, you've been getting consequence after consequence after consequence. That's God telling you, hey, dumbass, we do doing what you want. Start doing what I would have you do, and instead of dropping consequences on you, I'll start blessing you. Now, how do I get these? Out of my hands. How do I keep them out of my hands? Now, nobody in their right mind would take these steps unless they see why. Look, y'all come in here. You're sober. And you say, how do I have to take the steps? I'm sober. 
Anybody who's just looking to be sober will not do. They just won't. The purpose of the steps is to get out the way. Back in. Then I tap into some. Wake up, girl. What they give you for lunch? Quaaludes? Wake up. Now, how many of y'all have come to treatment before? Who's been to treatment before? How many of y'all keep using the steps to try to stay sober? And what happens to you every time? Your ass gets loaded. The steps are not designed to get or keep you. They're designed to get this out of the way so you can tap into some, and this is what keeps you sober. And most of y'all, that goes, I'm telling, just have you a seat back there in the back today. Okay, look up here. She's just walking. <laughs> if you use the steps for what they're not designed for, they won't work. If I had if I had a vacuum sitting right here and I told you, girl, I want you to tune in to the young and the wrestlers. Please tell me you couldn't. Could you? Why not? Why not? Because it's a vacuum cleaner. It's not designed for that, right? Right? Look at me, right? Now. If I told you to vacuum shit up off the carpet, like crackheads did, would it work? Because that's what it is designed for. Now, how many times have you been to treat? <coughs> did you use the steps to try to stay sober? What did you use them for? <coughs> what did you use them for? Stay out of trouble? Huh? Did you? You know why? Not designed for that. Look, the point I'm trying to get across to y'all, how many of y'all come in these facilities and you say, I'm sober, I'm sober, I'm sober. <laughs> well, what's sober? Any jackass in the world can get sober. I will prove it to you. Did you use today? See? <laughs> How many of y'all come in a place like this and you don't want to change? You want to be sober, but you don't want to change. And I'm telling you, the math doesn't, doesn't add up. Now, how many of y'all have ever heard of Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. the, the Garden of Eve. You ever heard of that? Yeah? Did you, did you just leave here not long ago? Have I ever had you? No. no. How many of y'all have ever heard of Adam and Eve? Yes. I'm going to tell you the drunk version. It'll make sense to you. When God created everything, they say it took him about seven days. He works quick. He created everything. He put all these creatures in the garden, dogs, cats, lions, bears. He says, I'm going to make something in my image. So he made man. He says, I'm going to give man some companionship. So he made woman. They say, that's when the problem started. <laughs> now, Adam and Eve were the only human creatures in the garden. And they fit in with all the other creatures. They let God take care of them. He closed them. He fed them. It's the best it's ever been. There was no crime, no pollution, no nothing. God told Adam and Eve, y'all have the run of the place. It's yours. Just don't eat the apple. <laughs> now, everything is rocking along. Again, it's the best it's ever been. One day, Eve wanders off by herself. Little snake corners are up. 
says, hey, Eve, you and Adam, not like us other creatures. Y'all have, y'all can eat the apple. He says, no, 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 we can't, because God said we couldn't. The little snake says, Eve, I'm telling you, do not like us other creatures. Y'all have, y'all can eat the apple. She runs back to Adam. Adam, 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 Adam. We have, he can eat the apple. So, what they did? They ate the damn apple. Now, God comes walking down the path of the garden one day. He sees the apple missing. He was shocked. He says, Adam, who, who ate the apple? Adam says, well, we did. I said, Adam, why did you do that? He pointed to Eve and said, she made me do it. <laughs> now, that is the first time man ever exerted. Now, did you know what happened to him? Huh? What happened? They got banned. Look, drunk version, they got banned from the garden. Now, before they got banned, God told them, hey, if you ever want to give this back, take it back with open arms. He made the same deal with you. Not us, unless you have a rat in your pocket. He made the same deal with now. Adam and Eve said, no. How do you get these out of your hands? In fact, where they belong. How do you do it? How do you give it back? How do I keep them out of my hands? <laughs> now, let's talk about results. Because that's what people wake them up. With these in your hands, are you getting great results or disastrous? Yes. What you get? What kind of results? In your life, what kind of results have you got? Great or disastrous? Do you know why? That's right. And you have to put something in you to change the way you feel. And it's called meth. If you come in here and stay the same and nothing changes, I promise you, eventually you're going to have to put something in you to change the way you feel. Now, with these out of my hand, in God's hands, I already feel good. So guess what I don't ever think about putting in me to change the way I feel. Look, I'm telling you, you can sit through all these you want. If you don't do something and continue doing it, you're going back to the first one. No matter what the consequences are, you've already proven that. Now, the instinct. So necessary for my existence, what they often do is far exceed their proper function, and they drive me, they dominate me, and they insist upon ruling my life if I let them. Now, before I ever knew what drugs and alcohol were, I'm about six years old. My older brother. Finally, allows me to go somewhere with him. We go to his best friend's house, and I steal about twenty dollars a quarters off his dresser. I'm six; don't know what drugs are. I get home, I hide the bitches. I'm six. His mama calls my mama. I think Kevin stole the quarters. He comes in my room and says, did you take those quarters? And I went, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen them. I did not do it. I got away with it. 
So what I started to form in my personality to satisfy these was dishonesty. Drugs ain't even in the picture. Now, all these defects of character start to crop up trying to satisfy. And shit's going haywire. I'm about 10, 11. Somebody comes up to me and says, hey, if you put one of these in you to change the way you feel. I said, you got two. And I took it. It was like taking a cup of gas. Pouring it on a self-will fire. Shit really exploded in. So if we just take the accelerant off, guess what we still got burning? Self-will fire. See, y'all come in here and y'all say, I'm sober. Mother, I'm sober. But nothing is really changed. How many of y'all in this treatment center sober? In y'all's little houses and stuff, do some inconsiderate shit. Sober. Dishonest shit. Sober. Selfish shit. Sober. So it can't be the drugs can it would have to be now if you ever see that that it's not the drug it is you are going to take and you're going to want to get these out of your hand now if i can learn what makes me tick and you are pretty much like me. I can learn what makes you tick. Now, if I learn what makes me tick, you're pretty much like, I can learn what makes you tick. I can start to get along better with people. And I have to have people to get along in this world. I want y'all to turn y'all's big books to page 55. That's two fives. Girl, what are you doing back in here? Let me ask you something. I see you sitting back there. And we're going over this. When you were in here when? How long ago? Okay, do you remember me telling you if we don't help sober you up and change your life, we're going to screw you up so bad. You're going to wish you never heard. Now, did we screw you using days up? Huh? You're welcome. <laughs> Look, when somebody comes in here, we get to this right here. You sort of get a grip on it, and I make damn sure we get a grip on it. We're fixing to do one of two things. We're fixing to catapult you to a whole different life, or we're fixing to screw your ass up so bad. You're going to wish you never heard was late. We're going to make you thirsty for one or the other. But we're going to make you thirsty. Now, page 55, the first paragraph down. Start reading. Yeah, page 55, the first paragraph down. Actually. Actually, we're for ourselves. Imagine that shit. <laughs> for deep down, every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. Hold on, man. Where's your book, man? Huh? I don't know where I put it. You know where you put it? I put it anywhere. Well, I bet you never would have forgot that vodka bottle. Okay, it says, actually, we were fooling ourselves for deep down. And every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of now. 
Where do y'all look for God? You look everywhere except where he actually is. How many of y'all, every time you start looking inside yourself, you go? Because <laughs> you don't like what you see. Now, it says God is where? Deep down. If somebody takes those steps, guess where you have to look? Deep down. And if you do, you're going to discover, yeah. I have people tell me, oh, I've got to, got to find God. I've got to find God. I said, well, wait a minute. God ain't lost. I have to find him. He's been here a long time. How many of y'all don't have God blocked out? You have him blocked in. Now, how many of y'all have a bunch of resentment? Top of God. How many of y'all have a lot of guilt and remorse on top of? How many of y'all have a lot of fears? So do you have him blocked out or in? Yeah. Now, this is how the blocks get removed. Zach, once the blocks are removed, Guess who starts directing me again loud and clear? And the way I keep new box from blocking him back in, this shit is so simple. You can get a bunch of real kindergartners in here and explain it to them, and they would get it like, you take a bunch of grown-up ass kindergartners, and you try to explain simple shit to them, it goes, Whoop. Now, what's the difference? Max, what's the difference between a real kindergartner and a grown up kindergartner? Do you know? I said, what's the difference? Yeah, there's a big difference. Look, the difference between a real kindergartner and a grown up kindergartner. And a grown-up kindergartner, guess what's really had time to get ingrained in them? So you can't really teach them a lot because they know about, and you can't teach them nothing. A real kindergartner, guess what hadn't had time to develop in them? So they're real teachable. Now, what makes a person like me? Who used to think he knew about, and you couldn't tell me nothing. What makes a person like me say? Thank you. I'm ready. Caught an ass kicking. Some of y'all in here had enough. Some of y'all start. Uh, start now. If I can learn what makes me tick, you're pretty much like I can learn what makes other people tick. Now, if God is deep down within me, He's deep down within. How many of y'all? People who really care about you, you're running them all left and right. How many of y'all? When you run people off, you're actually running God off. Now, how many of y'all have ever saw a little bitty baby in diapers? Not when you look in the mirror. <laughs> Are you okay? Huh? Look like that beer bar wants to come out in you. <laughs> How many of y'all have ever saw a little bitty baby in diapers? How do they communicate? 
to their emotions. When they're hungry, this is the way they'll tell you they're hungry. The way when they wet, the way they tell you they're wet is through their emotions. They will go, Wah. besides smelling their little ass, when they shit in their diapers, the way they tell you that is through their emotions and they go, Wah. now you're supposed to outgrow that. How many of y'all still communicate through your emotions? You don't get your way, how many of y'all go? <laughs> you still do that? Shit. <laughs> Big old grown up ass baby boy. <laughs> now, how many of y'all have ever saw a little baby crawl up to a cabinet and they go to open it and their mom or their daddy or grandma says, get in that cabinet. And they turn around and look at grandma or mama and go, away. Now, they will watch mama walk off. And when mama walks off, they'll try it again because they already know right from oh. you're born with that that is the fundamental idea of god how long have you been hearing that voice tell you right from wrong here for how long how long now right and wrong <laughs> is not the big people like me I know right and I know wrong. The biggie for me is what I want to do. Now, if I can get what I want to do out of the way, guess what's not a biggie for me anymore? Right, and How do I get this out of the way? I keep it out of the way. Now, the fourth step, go be on it tomorrow. The only way you can fill it out thorough and honest is if you understand these. Now, we're going to start right here. Get this in front of you. I want you to read the first one under the social instinct. Go. Read it. One, two, three, four. Pass our one back. It says wanting to belong or be. Now, is there anything wrong with that? It's perfectly necessary and right and surely God given. Read the next one. Power to command admiration. Coveted. Is there anything wrong with wanting some healthy prestige? It's perfectly necessary and right and surely God so if God gave it to me, it can't be bad. Read the next one. Self-esteem, what we think of ourselves, high or low. Anything wrong with some good, healthy self-esteem? Yes, Nothing. Read the next one. Pride, an unjustified yeah. opinion of oneself, the positive self-love, or negative self-hate. A lot of people think pride is a bad thing. It can't be because God gave it to me. Pride is not a bad thing. Most of y'all just have pride in the wrong shit. You just read that? Yeah. Read, read the next one. Personal relationships. Our relations with the other human beings and the world around us. Again, I have to have people to get along in this world. Now, how many of y'all realize it takes a lot of people to get you up every morning Get you dressed, get you fed, and get you going. Somebody made the clock. Somebody made the clothes. Somebody made the breakfast. So do you have to have people to get along in this world? Yeah. And how many of y'all are running people off left and right? And the people that you run off the most are the ones who really care about you. Now, 
every instinct at the bottom has an ambition. Now, I want you to listen to this. It's real simple. An ambition. Garrett, you, you can't really miss this again. An ambition. You know, your plans for future. Every one of y'all sitting in here has a social plan for your future. Okay, put security. Read the first one under security. Material. Wanting money, buildings, property, clothing, etc., in order to be secure in the future. Anything wrong with wanting some good material success? <laughs> Nothing. Y'all just fucking want to take everybody else's shit. There's nothing wrong with working hard, being honest, and having some good material security. Read the next one. Emotional, based upon our needs for other people. I mean, another person or person, some tend to dominate, some are overly dependent on others. How many of y'all in here? You've never, ever, never been in a healthy relationship. You hold people hostage. What you do now? How many of y'all depend on somebody way too much, or they can't live up to your insistent demands, or you're on the other spectrum? You try to dominate them. It's nothing right down the middle. Healthy. I tell people all the time. Before I got into this program, I never was in a relationship. I took people and I held them hostage. Either I depended on them way too much or I wanted to tell them everything to fucking do. Now, nobody can live up to that. That's why people get accustomed to you and they flee. Now, how many of y'all keep running people off? I could put Mother Teresa with some of y'all and y'all turn her ass out. <laughs> I could make Ken out of a dial, a real Ken, and y'all would run him off. People cannot live up to your insistent. I mean, yeah, y'all can't live with your own self. But you want other people to put up with you. At least you have an escape route. Huh. <laughs> Under the security instinct, you have ambition. That's your plans for the future. Okay. Going to move over to the sex instinct. I want you to look up here and listen. We're not talking about what you think we're talking about. We're not talking about the act, because if we were, with some of y'all, we would only be on it for about 10 seconds. <laughs> we're talking about the shit that you do to get what you want out of people. Now, it's real simple. You continue to treat people like you've been treated, we're not theorizing. These are facts out of our experience. You will use again. Now, read the first one under the sex instinct. Actually, in accordance with uh, human nature, no. Read the next one. Desire to long for it, to wish for it, to ask for it. Read the next one. Reproduction, active reproducing. And then you have an ambition. Now, human opinions, human opinions, when it comes to the sex instinct, run one extreme to another. You have some people who are very liberal when it comes to the sex instinct. They cry for sex and more sex. Then you have people who are very conservative. They think sex is a sin. Now, I'm going to show you how human opinions run from one extreme to. Now, how many of y'all think sex outside of marriage is a sin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
if you really get down to the nitty gritty, this is what it really says. If you use sex inside a marriage for not a sin, if you use it inside a marriage for anything other than reproduction, it is a sin. Now, again, again, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. I know y'all get real tripped up on this. We're not trying to get you to change it in one day. What we want you to do, we want you to get it all down on paper. I want you to take a look at it. But what we know is if your conduct continues the way it is now, you're not theorizing facts you will use again. Because you're still using this God-given instinct in a dishonest, selfish, inconsiderate, Way. Now, if you've been through Woodlake before, you've heard this because I can't change it. It's history. So if you've heard it before, listen to it again. Okay? Now, when I came into this program, I was 39. I had identical twin daughters. What I did to them. If he would have did it, one of us would not be here right now. It would depend who got to jump on who. Because if he would have did to my daughters what I did to them, I would be in Angola right now. Now, I'm running the streets of North Baton Rouge like a chicken with my head cut off. I'm doing what I want, when I want, and how I want. I don't care about nobody but my damn. Now, I know none of y'all in here like that. Out of my mouth, I would tell them, I love you, baby. And they would look at me and go, really? Then why do you do that to them? Now, they didn't say that, but that was their body language. They were too scared to say that. Now, what do you think I did to my daughter's companionship? Do you think I built that up in them and instilled that in them like a father should or destroyed it? You got kids? Are you building it up in them like a man should or destroying it? What do you think I did to their prestige wanting to be recognized as a leader? Do you think I instilled that in them? Or tore it down. You got kids? What are you doing? Building it up like a father should or destroying it? See, y'all come in here and y'all think y'all something that you're not. But the way you think, that's what you really are. What do you think I did to my daughter's self esteem? Do you think I built it up in them or destroyed it? What do you think I would do to him if he did all that to my daughters? I try. He'd have to be mighty quick not to get. Still today. <laughs> now, pride, do you think I instilled good, healthy pride in them or just destroyed it? How many of y'all walk around here saying, I love my babies? I missed the sale. See, look, what I told her about messing your using days up. See, this is the difference that most of y'all hadn't figured it out yet. Once you understand these, I'll make sure you do. If you leave here doing the same shit, the difference now is. Uh, they don't make enough vodka to blot out the consciousness of your intolerable situation once you know. See, before you really know and understand this, God has taken a lot of mercy on you. See, but when you leave here, no. 
he gonna start dropping some shit on you. A Jax don't take off. Look, I'm I'm telling you, you cannot scare an alcoholic. You just can't. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you facts. Because I guarantee when she heard that, she went, he's not going to mess up my view. He's just trying to scare me. <laughs> Garrett, how long has your using days been miserable? Do y'all think you're going to sit around here and do nothing and everything's going to be honky dory? <laughs> what do you think I did to my daughter's personal relationships? When they started middle school, they went to a new school their very first day. And their very first day of school, they meet all these new little girls. One of them goes home and tells her mommy, I have new best friends. They're identical twins. And the mama goes, oh, that's so cute. What's their names? And she tells them my daughter's name. And the mama says, oh, shit. Oh, uh-uh. You can't run around with those little girls. But see, the mama knows me, like what kind of a person I really am. And she repeats that in front of my little girl. The next day, the little girl goes to school the second day and repeats that in front of all those new little friends. When I found out, Know what I wanted to do? When she did what any good mother would do. I never one time said, you, you man. See how many of y'all get mad at everybody else and you never say? Hey. But you start to understand these. Either one or two things are going to happen. You're going to get them in some semblance of order. They're fixing to really run wild. Now, what do you think I did to their material security? They couldn't count on me far. Nothing. I would get them every other weekend. I'd bring them to Chuck E. Cheese's, buy them some tennis shoes, a bicycle and shit, and I'd go. When all they really wanted, I mean, y'all got kids. Do you really understand what you are doing to them? If you don't, you do now. I mean, y'all got kids. See, if somebody else did it to them, you wouldn't stand for it, would you? Would you? What would you do? What would you do? How many of y'all, somebody else does what you do, you can see it. And you won't stand for it. But when you do it, you justify, you rationalize, a bunch of nonsense. Now, what my daughters actually wished is that it was him. And not. Now, my parents. I mean, y'all have parents. If I was them, I would never, ever, ever speak to me again after what I did to them. You talk about two people. Who always did the right thing, gave a boy like me everything I needed. Not what I wanted. 
what I needed, clothes, roof over my head, food. I had everything. What I did to them to repay them, you shouldn't have a sentence long enough. Now, my mother, she was one of these people who were very quiet, very meek. And I used to think she was socially awkward. We would have family gatherings. He would sit there and wouldn't say a damn, not a word. My aunts, they bragging on my little cousins and shit. Uh, they got the trees and they been the sororities and all little bitches. <laughs> and my mom was just sitting there. Don't say nothing. And what what do you, what would you think she would say? Nothing. Those were the best friends right in North Baton Rouge. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she would have to say. Do you realize what you're doing to the people who have given you what you got? And you, you want to keep sticking it to them. Where would you be without them? That's what I would like. I'd like for you to answer. Where would you be without? Huh? What? And you want to go be with Mr. Wonderful when he's done nothing for you. And they've done. What about your parents? I mean, nice do you think your mother's cried herself to sleep, wondering where she went wrong? And she did. Nothing wrong, did she? She pretty much did everything. Huh? That's how she gets paid back. Selfish, self-centered to the core. Huh? But I just used too much out of her. My father, he wanted to put a foot up my ass. And my mother was one of these mothers who wanted to pick me up, prop me up, dust me off. So I got him arguing now. And this is what he would I would say about him. I don't know why he's so mad I didn't do nothing. I got my mom and my daddy. We've been married for years, solid marriages, or is arguing. Now he ain't getting none. And I'm wondering why he's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> How many of y'all? This is all you see. You want to see. You never take anybody else's feelings into consideration. It's always what I want, I got to have, and what I need. Now, my sisters, they would not let my own nieces and nephews around me. Do you know what that does to a sibling? Where they can't even let their own children be around their brother, who they love immensely. Do you know what that does to them? How many of y'all in here? I'm mighty quiet right now. How many of y'all come in here and you think you something that you really not? See, you come in here thinking you this father, this mm -hmm. husband, this man, huh? Huh. But the way you actually think, that's what you are. Now, when it comes to these instincts, are you very dishonest? Selfish. Inconsiderate. <clears throat> Seeing the crazy shit is, you know it. 
Every time you start getting a glimpse of what's really going on, the only thing that soothes it is that spirit in the bottle. Not the real one. In the bottle. That's the only way you can get ease and comfort. Now, how many of y'all come in here? And one of the questions I ask, are you a true believer in God? How many of y'all say, yes. And I say, bullshit. Now, I want you to listen to this. A true believer in God does not believe in God. They know. Now, this is what I know. I do the next thing right, no matter what it is. God takes care of my instincts. I don't believe that. I know that. Now, somebody that knows that, all they have to do is the next thing right. And God takes care of these. When it comes time to them, to make decisions. Do they have to be dishonest about shit? Do they have to be selfish? Inconsiderate? No, because they know. Down the lines, you're soon. Who's going to take care of mine? How many of y'all always snatching and grabbing? Snatching and grabbing trying to satisfy these and you have made a mess out of shit how many of y'all up here chaos how many of y'all have ever been in a room by yourself and there's so much chaos and confusion going on in that room, and you the only one in there. <laughs> now, the instinct of necessary for my existence. If I'm not careful, they will drive me. They'll dominate me, and they'll insist upon ruling my life. Now, we're going to talk about results. Because results are what people really, really want to talk about. Now, when these were in my hands, I lost my kids. My kids. I told them by my actions, come get them. They didn't take them. I handed them over by my actions. I lost my freedom. My family, my house, my job, my cars, my damn dog. When I got here, I had a garbage bag with everything I owned in it. Direct result on not smoking crack and drinking crown roll. Self will run. Now, what kind of results do you get? Great or disastrous? What you think is goes to the box? Don't you? That's why. What would you do to his big old ass if he treated your kids the way you treat him? <laughs> you wouldn't stand for it, would But when you do the same shit, do you justify it? You have to, to live with yourself. You know, I will take it easy on you because you still coming off the hooch. 
I want y'all to turn y'all's big books to page 62. Young gun, why are you in here? Tell me the truth. Still an issue. Huh? Still an issue. All right, I want you to start reading. I want you to start reading. We're on the first paragraph down on page 62. I want you to read it loud. I want, look. I want you to read it clear. I want you to read it loud like when you was hollering for dope. Go. Go. Selfishness subsection one. Selfishness subsection one. That's what we think. Uh -huh. That ain't what it says. Read it exactly like it says. Start over. Selfishness slash <laughs> Go. That we think is the root of our troubles. Now, it didn't say. Fentanyl was the root of your trouble, did it? Did it say what? Huh? No. Read it. Self-centered. Not Adderall, huh? What did it say was the root of your trouble? Really? Read it. Selfishness, self-centered. Oh, oh. That's not how you spell cocaine, is it? Oh, oh. I'll, I'll just... Look, it says that we think the we in that book doesn't mean that you have a rat in your pocket. That's not what we means. You're not a part of we yet. You would have to take the steps and recover to be a part of we. Now, People who used to be like you, and we ain't like you no more. This is what we know. It's not the drugs. It's not the alcohol. It is me. People who know that. No, driven by. Driven by a hundred forms of fear. Okay, stop. Look up here. How many of y'all in this room, when it comes to these instincts, you have a gnawing fear? You're not going to get what you want, or you're going to lose something you already have. Now, based on fear and fear alone, how many of y'all try to satisfy these and do some dishonest shit? And when you do, Justify it, you rationalize it, and you make yourself believe the shit you just did is okay. Now, read it. Fear. Fear, self delusion, self seeking. Now, take that word self seeking and flip it around. What's it say? Seeking self. What makes up self? How many of y'all, this is all you care about? I won't. I gotta have what I need and screw everybody else. And then you turn around and tell them, I love you. And you say it so dramatically because you don't even believe what you say. If I say it dramatically enough, they'll believe it. Mommy. Uh, now, how many of y'all based on fear Self delusion, self seeking, have screwed up shit and screwed up shit all in. And this one kicks in. And self pity. That's when your bottom lip pokes out and everybody can ride home on the bitch. Now, when you're driven by fear, self delusion, self seeking, and self pity, is this what you do? Go. We step on the toes of our fellows. Now, you've been stepping on people's toes? Yeah. Same ones you say out your mouth you love so dearly. Now, why do you step on their toes? Because you drink vodka or because you're a dishonest, inconsiderate, selfish person? Whose toes you've been stepping on the most? 
same ones. You want everybody in the community to believe the Lord Cleaver. I believe it to be them. Uh, if people really knew what went on behind closed doors, what would they think of you? Not what you think you are, huh? But the way you think, that's what they would see. You really didn't think this was going to be a walk in the park. Remember I told you you're not in Kansas anymore. You remember that? Okay. All right. Keep reading. Retaliate. How many times have y'all stepped on people's toes? They retaliated on you, and this is what you say. I don't know why they're doing that to me. I didn't do anything. People do not come up to Kevin James unprovoked for no reason and hurt me. I do something to affect one of their and they. Oh, yeah. Now, if I start to learn what makes me tick, everybody else is pretty much like start to get along better with people. Now, can I affect people's instincts by doing the right thing? I can. Look, one of my best friends, we were we were actually like brothers. I get sober, he keeps using. I'm about six months into this, and we see each other for the first time. I had learned a little bit about what makes me tick. So when we met, we were talking, he started treating me like I had to play. Didn't get mad at him. I was able to show him a little love, a little patience, a lot of tolerance, some forgiveness. Because I knew by me getting sober and him still out there, it affected his companionship. It affected his prestige, his self-esteem, his pride, his emotional security. So I sort of understood what was going on with it. Madison. So instead of thinking of me, I tried to think of him. You know, they have an old saying, you can catch more bees with honey. How many of y'all, the least little thing your instincts get stepped on, this is what you did. Oh! <laughs> Now, I want you to listen to this. What better place to start learning about what makes me tick than in here? See, maybe if some of y'all would start learning something about this and showing other people some consideration in here, instead of wanting to crucify them, y'all's houses may go a little bit better than they do. Unless your ass has been rendered white as snow and you can walk across the pond, you might want to see when you see it in somebody else, the only way you can see it is if it's within you. So when you start talking about other people, who you're really talking about is your self. But you can't see it unless it's in you. In AA, we have a saying, if you spot it, got it. The old people like her, they say, if you point the finger, look how many are pointing back. How many of y'all can see it in somebody else like that? But boy, when it comes to see it in you, you blind as a bat. And you think you're up here, and everybody else is? Before we move on, he comments. Question. 
Now, since I've been in this program, have I made mistakes? You better believe it. And this is what a mistake is. When I do something I shouldn't do, and I learn from it, and I never do it again. That is, now, are mistakes good for me? Yeah. yeah. Now, how many of y'all keep doing the same shit over and over and over and over, and you never learn from it? You know what they call that? Eat up with the dumbass. <laughs> Now, am I going to make mistakes? Yep. Are you going to make mistakes? Yes. How many of y'all sitting in this room right now have done some stuff you want to be forgiven for? How many of y'all with forgiveness is shown to you? It is the best thing God has ever created. Father, when the shoe's on the other foot, and it's time for you. To show some forgiveness. How many of y'all? Uh-uh. Ain't doing that. How dishonest is it of you to want to be forgiven, but you won't forgive? How selfish is it? How inconsiderate is it? You know, it's crazy to watch one of us. We will talk about God all day long, and if shit's going great, God is great. But the least little thing that doesn't go your way, how many of y'all get right back into and you do this? Look. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And God's going, well, wait a minute now. Ten minutes ago, you said I was great. Now, let's talk about results. I want you to listen to this one. As a result of being here, I'm, I'm not even going to talk to you about the material shit. Because if you do this, it'll come. But I want to talk to you about this. How many of y'all come in here thinking you something that you're not? I am actually, no matter what y'all read on Facebook, I am a husband to my wife today. I am a brother. I'm a brother 